In this episode of your training, I'm going to teach you how to create anchor tags, or you might better know them as links. So I will close up my browser, and here is our working directory, and I'm going to drag that back into Espresso, which we've been using in this series. Now, I'll create a new file, and we're going to call this one links. Once again, using my snippet management tool, I'm going to paste in some beginning markup. To create a link, we first need to know what we're linking to. So let's say we want to link to NetTuts. This is the URL. Now, of course, this in of itself is not going to work. It's not clickable. There's nothing that auto detects a link. However, if we come back, we can use the A element, A for anchor. And again, we don't paste it in as the value. It's going to be similar to the way image elements work. So I will do A and provide an attribute called href or href. And that means what is the reference? And I will paste that within quotes. Now, if I save that like it is and I preview it, you're not going to see anything at all. And that's because anchor tags do require a value. And they also cannot self-close like this or like this. So let's give it a value. Go to NetTouch. And now I will close out my anchor tag. So now we have an anchor tag that's linking to NetTuts, and the value of the anchor tag will be inserted as the value. And now, if I preview it, we have this link. I click on it, and sure enough, I've been directed to NetTuts. Very cool, very easy. Now, we can do this exact same thing linking to local pages. So let's do another one. The rep this time, rather than being an absolute, we refer to this as an absolute URL because it's external. In this case, we want to reference a local page, such as links, lists, or forms. So we'll do that like so, and we're going to link to the forms.html page. Now, before we click on preview, think to yourself, how is this going to display on the page? All right, let's check. Notice they're both on the same line. And this is something we're going to learn a little bit more when you begin working through CSS. But to quickly go over this, there are some elements that are considered block level, meaning they take up all available space, pushing everything past that to its own line. And then there are elements that are referred to as inline elements, meaning as many as you have, they will continue to be placed on that one line until you exceed the width of the container. In this case, that would be the width of the window, as you can see right there. So there's a couple options here to solve this. One of them would be if you're creating a list of links, it makes sense to place those within an unordered list. And we, when we do it like this, all list items are considered block level by default. So if we wrap that and then indent it, if I preview it, now each of those are on their own line. Another way is to use what's referred to as a break tag. Now you want to be very cautious about using these. They do have their place, but people often misuse them. So if you want to literally refer to a line break, you can use the BR element and it's self-closing. Now this is pushed down onto its own line. So one thing that you will see often is if you ever look at markup and you see something like this, Either it's coming from a WYSIWYG editor, that's referred to as a what you see is what you get, where the user just keeps hitting enter and it's not properly creating the necessary markup, it's just adding in a bunch of break tags. So you'll see this a lot with blog postings where people are using a visual editor and this is sometimes what's produced. If I click preview, can you see all those extra spaces? You're getting the effect, but this is really not the way to go. Instead, it would be better to either apply a class to this and use some margin top within your CSS file or some margin bottom on this or wrap this in an element and then apply some padding or margin. That is the more proper way to do it. Simply inserting 10 break tags is not a good idea. But if you need to do one, that's okay because you're literally referring to a line break and that makes sense in this case. All right, so that's anchor tags. We can go to NetTuts for an absolute URL, and we can even reference local URLs, as you can see right there.